So today uh, we have uh, Roman Svitkoi. He's currently a professor of mathematics at the University of Illinois of Chicago. And um, uh, he has been working on analysis of PDs, mainly on fluid mechanics and uh, recently, and more recently in clocking, uh, behavior for uh, fluid models and kinetic models. And uh, he's now a recipient of the Simons Fellow in Mathematics Award in 2000, uh, well, he was in 2018. So I would like also to mention that he has uh, recently written a nice monograph on the subject. And then it's a pleasure to have uh, him here today. He's gonna give us a talk about analytical aspects of emergent dynamics in systems of collective behavior. So Roman, please. All right, uh, thanks uh, Jose for the introduction. And uh, I would like to thank of course the organizers for giving me this uh, opportunity to uh, um, um, rather honorable opportunity to uh, present a talk at this at this venue. Uh, so maybe hopefully next time uh, we'll be able to meet in person if, if possible. So um, I am going to speak about uh, some alignment models um, of emergent dynamics. Uh, it is a relatively new subject for me and uh, but it's very, very, um, uh, sort of engaging subject and uh, very interesting one. And so I would like to share some of the recent developments in this in this field. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, these uh, organizations for support. And of course, uh, many of my collaborators, especially Hayton Tadmar, who kind of ignited my interest in the subject. And um, there are various parts of the project, uh, uh, projects, uh, I would say, that were done um, with with uh, col uh, collaboration with uh, Constantine Drivas uh, Leslie, and then also people in France and my my uh, postdocs and and students. So uh, the the subject uh, of today's lecture is going to be collective behavior. Uh, collective behavior um, we can observe in many different uh, uh, different uh, uh, applications. Um, uh, primarily, you can see it in every day, of course, in, in the behavior of animals, uh, flock of birds, uh, school of fish, um, but also uh, uh, various uh, self-organization phenomena occur in social uh, science, such as formation of opinions uh, or various technological applications, such as satellite navigation. So um, just to put it simply, uh, the models of self-organized dynamics are, uh, you know, there are, there are various levels of description. Uh, we of course always start with agent-based systems, which are sort of most fundamental. Um, this could be the first order or second order uh, differential equations, uh, which uh, are characterized by uh, some kind of um, uh, presence of some kind of communication protocol between agents. So they talk to each other to uh, form some kind of uh, organizational uh, dynamics. So um, one of the things that we see in, in nature in particular is pattern formation. In, uh, in uh, social networks, we see clustering. So these are the kind of collective phenomena we, we have in mind. Um, what we're gonna talk uh, in particular today about is what's called the emergence. So emergence is the formation of global global patterns resulting from local communication, okay? This is a very actively developing area and uh, you know, there are very interesting uh, things to understand here. So uh, what typically you see is the system starts with in some kind of disorganized uh, uh, state and then you can see uh, local formations of organized behavior and then over time you can see some kind of global uh, phenomena forming in the flock. Okay, so uh, let me just give very, in very wide brush strokes, uh, uh, some of the models that are uh, very uh, popular in, in, this, in this subject. So there's a class of environmental averaging models, which uh, basically uh, tell you that whatever your state variable is, it could be velocity or it could be uh, opinion, for instance, um, uh, it's the state variable is trying to adjust itself to some kind of average of others 
uh, of other variables of uh, in neighboring agents selected from uh, some kind of a, a protocol and I and less to itself. So everybody is trying to adjust their their variables according to the um, uh, states of, of other agents around. So in particular, the um, haxel mankraus vidian model is one of these uh, examples. Um, a large class of gradient dynamics, which uh, people in this auditorium are familiar with, um, uh, especially uh, uh, gradient dynamics with uh, uh, repulsion attraction potential, such as Leonard Jones or Morse, uh, very popular in cell migration, in modeling cell migration or traffic. It also appears in various uh, uh, restricted uh, settings on, on, on manifolds or in particular in sphere known as a Thompson problem. Distribution of electrons on a, on a sphere is a very classical problem. So um, uh, closer maybe to the subject of this lecture would be the Kuramoto synchronization model which uh, is, uh, appears in many applications, uh, such as uh, synchronization uh, uh, of uh, cardiac, uh, cardiac, uh, cardiac cell, uh, cells and uh, uh, acoustic synchronization of uh, various insects in, in the backyard. Um, uh, more to application of uh, 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 dynamics of flocks would be the classical V-shaped model. Uh, this model is um, only recently people are trying to understand this analytically. It's pretty difficult to understand it, uh, to, to analyze it rigorously. It's actually a discrete in time model, but one can in fact consider also the continuous model uh, where the velocities are trying to average itself uh, in, in a neighborhood of relative to the uh, mm, uh, uh, velocities of the neighboring uh, species. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, a const it has a constant uh, uh, speed uh, feature, uh, plus forces added such as stochastic forces, uh, uh, attraction, repulsion, and so on and so forth. So uh, what I will focus more today on is the what's called the cooker smell dynamics. So the uh, cooker smell dynamics is sort of, um, it appeared all relatively recently in 2007 in an attempt to basically produce um, a well-defined, well-posed uh, system of ODEs, um, which uh, can produce uh, um, uh, this flocking behavior uh, unconditionally, uh, depending only on, initial uh, only on initial conditions or the properties of the communication kernel. So here, it, it resembles the environmental averaging model, which it actually is with a proper communication weight inserted here. But um, what it does essentially is it regulates uh, the communication strengths between the agents according to the predefined uh, communication kernel fee. So this model also appears in various applications and I will mention that uh, in, a, in, in a few minutes. So what are the phenomenon that we will be uh, looking at? Uh, one is called alignment. So alignment means that uh, the velocity, all the velocities in your systems uh, it could be opinions, for instance. So it, it doesn't really have to be physical velocity. The, the actual physical meaning of these variables depend on the context. So uh, all these velocities are aligned to uh, a single vector, V bar. There's also what we call flocking, uh, which is uh, the uh, confinement of the uh, agents themselves in the a, uh, in a region of uh, bounded uh, radius over time. So. There's also strong flocking, which, uh, which is basically saying that not only uh, flock uh, is confined to a bounded region, but it's also kind of crystallizes. So all the distance, all the uh, displacement between agents converge to fixed vectors. So over time, the flock forms a graph. And if all these distances collapse to, collapse to zero, we call this phenomenon aggregation. There are other aggregation phenomena that of course we know in nature, but uh, this is one of the things that we uh, uh, sometimes see in alignment dynamics. So uh, coming back to the issue of emergence. So uh, to understand how emergence can occur, we first need to understand what uh, can we actually prove alignment for the long range communication. Uh, and the uh, uh, 
the idea here is that the stronger the long range communication, the, uh, the better agents communicate with each other at longer distances. And this creates uh, some kind of a confinement effect. So the flock does not disperse, uh, it, stays, it remains bounded. And as it remains bounded, the communication between the agents becomes bounded away from zero basically. And this would be a good uh, sort of prerequisite to obtain alignment result. And so the first kind of cornerstone result in this, in this subject was obtained by Cooker and Smale, Cooker and Smale themselves, um, which uh, states that if uh, communication uh, behaves at infinity uh, as a radial function, uh, it, it's not integrable basically. So if the, if the power law is, is, uh, is non-integrable, then the, the uh, flock will align uh, and, and remains bounded for all time. And actually exponentially fast. It will happen exponentially fast. Um, this was extended shortly after by uh, Hai and Liu in 2009 to include uh, more general classes of kernels, uh, which we now call fat, fat tail or heavy tail kernels. So all you need is for the kernel to be monotonic, non-degenerate, ne never vanishes, and uh, non-integrable at infinity. So uh, the original proof of Cooker smell was actually based on graph theory, uh, uh, sort of uh, the, the, measure, the, the, the dynamical measure of connectivity of the graph, but Baha'i Leon found a much simpler proof based on a construction of a Lyapunov function, essentially. So what about local communication? If communication is completely local, so your kernel is, is just, a, let's say, a step function, okay? Then it's actually easy to produce a counterexample in the open space. Uh, you just uh, arrange two flocks, which, are, which have opposite momenta and initially separated by a distance longer than communication distance. So they will just fly away and disperse in, in space without even, without even communicating with each other at any time. So definitely no alignment is possible in this case. Um, what one can, one can also produce a counterexample on a compact manifold such as, such as torus, where you simply arrange two agents, for example, rotating in a parallel way, uh, but different velocities. So, Okay, in counter counter rotating manner uh, along geodesics, or one can actually arrange one agent going along one geodesic and the other one uh, along the perpendicular geodesic, with velocities being mutually rational, uh, in such a way that they will never meet. So their trajectories are going to be periodic, but they never uh, meet each other. So if they stay a positive distance away from each other, which is communication distance, they will never align. So. So this, these are the issues. These are called locked state, locked, locked states. We're going to talk about them a little later. Um, so, so typically, um, uh, an alignment result in in this uh, local under local communication settings will require some kind of um, uh, perpetual connectivity of the flock. So we need to assume that the graph formed by the, by the flock is going to be connected by by uh, edges of um, uh, of communication uh, range, so that you can always pass from one agent to another through those short legs. Uh, but this is uh, quite a lot of some quite a big assumption because uh, we need to actually assume that for all time. So that's not an assumption on the initial condition. But sometimes you can actually ensure that connectivity uh, under either strong communication hypothesis that was done by Morales. Uh, Pejic and Tadmar uh, relatively recently, uh, or actually in the original paper of Cooker Smail, you can assume that the flock is already nearly aligned. So all the velocities are already very close to each other. And then the flock will simply quickly rearrange itself. I mean, quick, quick, quickly aligns its, itself exponentially fast without even destroying the, the connectivity. So this is something to keep in mind. So under local communication, we don't actually have uh, this unconditional result in, in, in the subject. And this is what something that we're looking for. Now, after the inception of, of the system, uh, uh, there were a lot of interesting application that appeared um, 
the Cooker's Mail model was proposed to be uh, a central communication model for uh, what's called the Darwin mission, uh, commissioned by uh, European Space Agency to launch satellites in space and look for sort of habitable or Earth-like planets. And uh, some engineers worked out even the optimal value of the of the uh, uh, this power beta in a Cooker's Mail kernel to be 0 0.4. So that's the kernel that makes the flight most fuel efficient. Uh, there were plaster, uh, a uh, plethora of various other applications to uh, decent the uh, 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 decentralized control uh, to uh, various analytical frameworks of optimization methods. And uh, more recently, uh, these models, especially for singular kernels, which we're going to talk about uh, in a minute, uh, were uh, tested by through from the point of view of machine learning. So one can actually recover some uh, phys uh, physically interesting kernels uh, through the machine learning technique techniques. So uh, let me introduce all the players here. So um, when we study large uh, crowd dynamics, we typically uh, uh, look for macroscopic or mesoscopic discrete levels of description. So the discrete system becomes too difficult to analyze uh, and so uh, we consider empirical measures uh, written here and uh, try to prove that uh, this uh, sequence of measures converges uh, weakly to some distribution and the limiting distribution satisfies the corresponding uh, kinetic equation of, of uh, Vlasov type. So this was done in, uh, by Ha and Tadmer right after Cooker's mail basically uh, using BBJKY uh, formalism, uh, but justified rigorously by high and legal. And uh, recently, uh, uh, Paul and Natalini actually produced uh, uh, a result that, that kind of goes along the BBJKY hierarchy and they prove propagation of chaos and all this, you know, the uh, you know, st statistical mechanical ingredients of this limit. So, uh, here, the collision operator is sort of like a gain-only operator. It, it, it basically mimics the alignment uh, 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 alignment protocol. Um, uh, for macroscopic uh, variables, uh, by the way, the uh, global existence of this uh, system for smooth kernels phi is not very difficult to establish because this is just a simple transport equation. So you solve the equation along the characteristics, right? So it's not it's not like a collisional model. Um, so the the trans the vector the transport uh, vector field remains uh, smooth for all time. Um, the macroscopic variables uh, formally satisfy the corresponding what's we, what we call Euler alignment system. So when we write our Euler alignment system, just from the kinetic formulation, we of course are confronted with the issue of uh, a closure where you see that there is a, a, a extra Reynolds stress appearing uh, in, the, in the flux term. And depending on regime and, you know, relative to which you want to recover the system, this Reynolds stress can, can uh, take different, uh, different um, uh, forms. So there are two uh, known results in this direction. One is by Kahn Vasseur, first without the uh, without the actual alignment uh, uh, force, but then Figali and Kahn settled this issue for the full Cooker's mail loss of equation. Um, what they did was they forced the kinetic equation by a strong local alignment. Uh, forcing and uh, uh, this created a concentration of the uh, distribution into the monokinetic ansatz. So the monokinetic ansatz produces rain, uh, zero Reynolds stress and that creates a pressureless Euler, Euler alignment system. Uh, recently, uh, I extended this result to, so the Figali Khan result was for um, non vacuous solutions on the, on the torus, but playing some tricks with this alignment term, one can actually. Uh, prove this for open space with compactly supported uh, compactly supported flocks. Uh, another regime is the uh, Maxwellian. So here you force you consider the full Fokker Fokker Planck alignment 
system, and then you're forcing local alignment and the noise. So in this case, uh, the distribution uh, converges to the corresponding Maxwellian, and the macroscopic quantities satisfy the isothermal uh, Euler alignment system where the pressure is equal to the density. So uh, just to say quickly, um, most of the work has been done uh, on the well posedness and alignment properties of the pressureless Euler alignment system. Only recently, we're starting to understand the dynamics of um, a system with, uh, with isothermal pressure. And the reason is because, well, it, because it's harder. <laughs> Uh, it, 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 it is likely to blow up, um, uh, more likely to blow up than the pressureless one. But from the point of view of collective dynamics, the pressureless system uh, allows for uh, a wealth of uh, collective outcomes. In fact, every, uh, every density profile uh, traveling with a constant velocity, U bar, will be a solution to this, to this pressureless uh, system while uh, the pressured system only has one natural outcome, and that is a uniformly distri uh, distributed pressure. So it mo makes more sense to consider this system uh, on the torus to be consistent with the fi uh, finiteness of mass, uh, while the pressureless case can be considered in the open space as well. So let me focus on the pressureless system now, and I will uh, briefly overview um, sort of like a first stage of, of this program on, of investigation which is more or less completed now. Um, so uh, for, for smooth kernels, when the communication kernel phi is smooth, uh, we, uh, we do have alignment, uh, just like for the classical cooker smell case. And that was proved by Todd Morita in 2014 under fat tail communication. So the hydrodynamic version of, of the flocking uh, basically says that all the velocities, all the material velocities on the support of the flock will exponentially align and the diameter of the density uh, will remain bounded. As far as will pose in this, uh, in 1D, this system, already in 1D, this system can blow up, okay? This, this is not a big issue. I mean, we can still study weak solutions. Uh, it is natural for pressure, uh, for compressible dynamics to blow up, but there is a very nice threshold condition uh, which regulates this, uh, uh, this this global well posedness for, for the for the model. So this is given by what we call the E quantity. It's the uh, you know without the alignment force, this would be simply uh, saying that U X is positive, just like for the Burgers equation. For the Burgers equation, this would be criterion for global well posedness. So because the alignment term has more regularity properties, you have a little bit of a more leeway with this threshold condition. So you can add the convolution of the density. And if that quantity is positive, then it's um, uh, then um, it actually will remain positive because it satisfies its own continuity equation, and um, uh, the solution will be global level post. And the reason is because E controls the derivative of the velocity. Now, this E quantity, its, it's physical meaning um, can be understood as uh, entropic. So there are there are various results towards this. Uh, first. Uh, with, with Leslie, we established that it actually regulates how, how disordered will be the limiting flock in the end. So if, the, if, for example, this E quantity initially is equal to zero, then the limiting flock will converge to a uniform distribution, just like for pressure or uh, alignment system. For um, uh, if, 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 so there, there's actually an inequality quantitative uh, measure with, that we can uh, establish. Um, of deviation from the uniform distribution. So Leslie and Tan recently released uh, a paper where they established Khrushchev entropy theory for weak solutions um, uh, in one D case. So we are hoping now to, to extend these results to uh, weak solutions. Uh, and in multi D, not much is known. In fact, um, uh, it is of course likely blow, to blow up, but uh, can we sort of extract uh, large classes of uh, solutions which uh, exist globally in time? And uh, Tanmar and he uh, found uh, one conditions based on spectral dynamics um, uh, saying that if, if the initial spectral gap of the uh, uh, symmetric strain tensor is small and also the flock is nearly aligned, 
then that flock will exist globally in time. Uh, recently with Lear, we found uh, unidirectional. So it's a, it's a large class of, uh, of flocks called unidirectional flocks. These are flocks that just point in one direction. Okay, they like parallel shear flows in fluid dynamics, except here the uh, vector field may depend on all spatial, spatial variables. So one can actually extend the one dimensional theory to this sort of pseudo multidimensional seconds. But what's also interesting is that you can superimpose these flocks and form what we call Mikata solutions. So these solutions uh, that appear in a recent uh, resolution of the Ansager conjecture for the incompressible Euler equation. Uh, uh, and, and they were introduced by uh, uh, the, uh, Sara Danieri and uh, Laszlo Saikulhidi in an attempt to prove that. And Nazat actually concluded that, that line of development. Um, so what's interesting is that um, these solutions also exist in the context of alignment dynamics. And probably we can, um, we can apply the uh, convex integration method to potentially obtain some non-uniqueness result uh, for, uh, for, these, for these models. Uh, there's interesting aggregation phenomena that occur. So for these unidirectional flocks, uh, if the supports of the flock is completely embedded in the set of zero entropy, um, then it will actually, over time, it will squeeze. Okay, as the flock passes through, uh, uh, the this 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 um, uh, finite volume uh, flocks will actually squeeze to zero volume flocks, and one can actually produce pretty uh, precise analytical results about what will be the limiting skeleton of the flock uh, as time goes to infinity. Uh, we can measure Hausdorff dimensions of these structures and we can uh, relate them topologically to the topology of the initial flux. So basically what it does is it deflates the flux as time goes to infinity. So um, now uh, another phase of this program was to introduce the singular kernels. And uh, this was actually done maybe for the first time by, uh, uh, by, by, by several authors in fact. Uh, Korea, Choi, Muha, and Pejak uh, realized that uh, the singular kernel here uh, can, uh, with, with the sufficient singularity, uh, can help avoid collisions. Uh, the, there was a lot of uh, results established uh, in the context of weekly, uh, weekly singular kernels where the power beta is less than one, so that the kernel is integrable. Uh, or, or perhaps less than n, the dimension of the space, so that the kernel uh, produces what's called the uh, Ries, Ries potential. Um, and, um, uh, uh, but from the point of view of modeling uh, collective dynamics, the, singular, the singularity um, is very important to study because it emphasizes more local interactions than global ones. So even if, even if the results do require global kernels to produce al uh, alignment, um, it's still more of a local nature than the global one. So uh, in 2016, 17, and then also independently by, by this group of uh, people, uh, we introduced uh, uh, super singular kernels, which are kernels of the fractional Laplacian. And that sort of, um, Spur development of, of this theory in, in a somewhat different direction, uh, borrowing tools from uh, the Georgi theory, the Georgi regularization, uh, modules of continuity method became relevant that uh, uh, appeared in the resolution of a global regularity problem for uh, various critical uh, parabolic uh, scalar equations such as Berger's or SQG. And uh, what's interesting is that uh, here, uh, the uh, alignment force has a commutator, well, alignment force has a commutator structure regardless of the kernel, but here it produces a parabolic operator. So there is a definitely a regularization effect uh, in the equation, which fights with the singularization effect coming from the transport equation. So uh, global openness was established on the torus for non-vacuous solution in 1D. In multi-D, the question remains widely open. And the only couple of results we know was the result uh, for small initial data. 
uh, and uh, similar small initial data, but expressed in vessel spaces by Dan Shan, Mucha, Pejic, and Drablevsky. Uh, Kiselev and Tan studied these dynamics in, with the inclusion of singular interaction forces. And uh, a blow up was actually obtained by uh, Arnaiz and Castro uh, when the density vanishes only at one point. So no blow up is known for, uh, for the uh, general non vacuous solutions, even though the uh, initial Hölder regularization is, uh, can be proved for this system. Uh, and we obtained some numerical results from Adam Larius uh, a couple of years ago, which uh, are indicative of blow up, but they're not conclusive. So there's definitely, we can see some squeezing of, of, uh, uh, of, of, of uh, uh, level surfaces of the magnitude of, of the velocity. And there is definitely an inflation of the gradient, but um, you know, the, it remains to be seen whether this model blows up, but we believe it does blow up, in fact. Uh, however, this does not prevent the model from being studied from numerical point of view, or from the point of view of machine learning in particular by this group of people who produced an interesting uh, calibration results uh, where they determined that uh, for value alpha equals 0 0.5, there is a almost like almost 100% accurate match with, with some of the field data they compared the model with. In 2D case, uh, the alpha is equal to 1.2. So alpha, any alpha bigger than one uh, is more likely to produce a, um, a globally regular model. So this is kind of a compelling case for us to actually try to push in that direction and, and prove global regularity in this case. So, uh, but let's go back to purely local models. And here, uh, I'm going to just assume that my uh, kernel is bounded away from zero, singular or not, uh, at the moment. Uh, and I know nothing else beyond that range. So the kernel may actually vanish uh, for r greater than two r naught, for instance. So uh, the counter examples that I showed in the beginning, uh, they come into play here. Uh, if we are on the torus, however, we do still have some advantage of, of uh, compactness of the domain, right? So this, uh, there is some kind of recurrence that occurs in the dynamics of the flop. Um, so the locked state that I suggested as counterexamples, they're actually very unlikely to occur in, in, um, in nature or to be observed because they are not stable. I can uh, perturb them by epsilon in any direction, and all of a sudden they, you know, the uh, the flocks will start interacting. Uh, so for uh, these these locked states, they 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 form um, uh, measure zero initial conditions. Uh, so therefore, we'll, there are several possibilities to approach this problem and to get rid of these locked states. Uh, one is, of course, to insist on connectivity. Okay, but this some uh, something that uh, we we want to improve upon. So we don't really want to uh, study completely connected flocks. We already know results in that direction. Uh, the question becomes how uh, how much can we weaken the that connectivity assumption? Uh, we can also think about generic initial data. So can we prove uh, alignment results for um, generic data away from a set of measure zero in some sense. So this was only done in actually in 1D where the dimensional uh, restrictions are very, very severe, of course, with in our work with uh, Helge Dieter. But uh, there we, we can consider very degenerate kernels, okay? Kernels that are not even supported near the origin, but somewhere else. Uh, and a third approach, a reasonable approach to avoid this problems with locked states is to consider stochastic noise. So add a noise to the system, it definitely will disrupt these, these perfectly arranged solutions. And perhaps we can study alignment in the, understand alignment in the vanishing noise limit, okay, in some sense. So I will talk about now these uh, three uh, possible approaches. And uh, just to give you sort of an idea of what we can get almost for free, is, is from the uh, energy law. So if you write down the energy law for the Euler alignment system, 
uh, then under the assumption that the density is bounded away from zero, where that bound depends on time, we can make a streak of inequality to produce some kind of grown all inequality for the energy. Okay, the energy here, if you assume that the zero momentum is equal to zero, then the energy uh, basically measures the, uh, uh, the alignment of, of the system. So if it goes to zero, the, uh, all the velocities go to zero, which are, which are the uh, natural limit in this case. So, um, what we, so what we get here is this lower bound, the, the density, because it appears twice in the dissipation, uh, side of this law, um, it pops up as, as the lower bound squared. So in order to send energy to zero, we need to uh, assume that this, this lower bound squared is not integrable in time. So roughly speaking, the density has to behave like one over square root of T in order to ensure some kind of algebraic decay of the energy. So this is what we get for free in a sense. Um, we can improve that, and this is what start sort of started another uh, another program in this in this emergent uh, dynamics is to uh, consider what's called the topological um, communication. So topological uh, uh, versus metric communication, what we've considered so far, uh, is based upon the density of the crowd around. So uh, there were some uh, pretty uh, convincing actually observations uh, from the field studies by this uh, group of Italian uh, experimentalists, uh, which observed something like over 2000 uh, starling birds. And they determined that each bird can only sense uh, say seven uh, birds in the, in the uh, uh, immediate vicinity. Uh, and uh, it, arranged, it arranges its velocity according to the uh, according to the velocities of those only seven birds, but it doesn't really matter where they are located precisely. So it's, it, it tells us that um, in many systems, uh, it's not about the Euclidean, it's not the Euclidean distance that determines the uh, sensing capabilities of, of species, but, but the density of the crowd. So uh, the topological neighborhoods can change according to the density and not just the uh, Euclidean radius. Uh, topological models based on this idea already appeared uh, previously, uh, was one proposed by Jan Haskevets in 2013, uh, based on uh, a density of the ball around each agent. Again, the alignment result in this direct, in this case, uh, required uh, a connectivity assumption. Uh, and the kinetic, in the kinetic uh, settings, uh, Blanche and Digon studied uh, models based on uh, uh, K closest neighbor inter, uh, kind of interactions. So um, now if I gave a talk on a particular paper published in CIMA, I would probably <laughs> pick this one, uh, the joint, joint work with Aidan recently, uh, where we proposed another topological model, which help us lower connectivity assumptions significantly. And in fact, that assumption, uh, uh, can be verified automatically in, in some cases. So uh, our idea is based on the fact that uh, there is some kind of uh, region of communication between any pair of agents. And in that region, uh, the communication is determined, the strength of communication is determined by the density. So the denser the crowd between, the, uh, between those two agents, the slower the communication, the propagation of communication between them. So the information travels slower in density regions, which is reasonable to assume. And then in thinner region, regions, the information travels faster. So the communication kernel has to be inversely proportional to the mass of that communication region. So we postulated the following, the following completely local, but singular, um, uh, singular communication kernel. And, uh, we propose to study this pressureless uh, topological, fractionally based topological uh, diffusion model. Uh, and it turned out that, uh, yes, indeed, you can, in fact, lower this uh, uh, the required lower bound on the density up to the one over T. Okay? And in that case, 
the alignment does occur even weak though, but it's like logarithm of time, inverse of logarithm uh, of time to the power one over six. So it's pretty low, uh, low rate, but it's still a rate. So we can hope to improve upon that. But, but what's, what was interesting was that uh, uh, this condition on the density, in fact, uh, is verified automatically uh, in one dimensional case. And the reason is because this E quantity that uh, I mentioned earlier, so here is gonna be, uh, maybe I'll write like this. So uh, EX plus fractional Laplacian applied to the density, uh, it, it, it remains, uh, it remains uh, conserved even for topological models. And um, as a result of that, the density, uh, the continuity equation becomes parabolic as well. And one can uh, extract some lower, better lower bound in, in that case. So in 1D, this is actually not an assumption. That's, that's a theorem. So we have unconditional uh, alignment for topological models on one dimensional torus. In, in general, we do require this, uh, this, this lower bound. Um, and the proof is actually based on, on the picture that I presented in, in the beginning of my talk. We do see local alignments first forming before the global picture emerges. And the local alignment here is essentially the consequence of the uh, sort of a similar to um, what's called the first de Georgi lemma. So the technique here uh, is, is, is parabolic technique. So you're trying to prove that uh, there are no, there are no uh, peaks, there are no big splashes in the extreme splashes in the velocity field in the uh, uh, above, um, uh, energy and, and below the minus energy. So uh, what you're trying to prove is that the diffusion burns down the velocity field starting at the extremes. And then it can be expressed in terms of kind of a conditional probability uh, 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 lemma. Um, and then what you see is that this kind of local, local alignment starts happening across, across the flock. Uh, these local orientations can be, still be misaligned, but you definitely see local alignment. And that can be expressed in terms of this Campanata Murray spaces. So I'm not going to go much into details because this is a colloquium after all. Uh, but, but the idea is that you, you can see uh, local emergence of, of the patterns. And then in the end of the day, you connect the two dots, the, the two extreme uh, values of the velocities, and you push them together with a certain uh, epsilon delta argument, which you can quantify and obtain this logarithmic uh, decay. So uh, the well-posedness of this uh, topological models are, is, is pretty technical. So we proved this with Aiton in one D case in the original paper, then local well-posedness for multidimensional models came in the paper, recent paper with uh, Reynolds. Uh, and then, uh, with, with Leslie, we studied uh, structure of these flocks uh, according to the um, uh, in, employing this entropic quantity as a measure of disorder. Uh, and then recently, we finally found a good effective uh, continuation criterion for uh, this topological system uh, with Lear and Ray Reynolds. And we proved the existence of basically uh, same solutions that we already know for the metric model. So you have unidirectional flocks and you have nearly aligned flocks, they're all well posed in topological settings as well. But these are pretty technical works. It's not just an application of some energy methods because you have, um, you, you have uh, all your estimates are heavily contaminated by the density sitting inside the kernel. So it's an active, it's an active kernel. And as a result, uh, you end up doing some para-differential calculus, some quintic uh, para-product estimates. So uh, it's, quite, it's quite technical, so I won't be able to explain in detail what's going on. Um, uh, and a global existence in 1D is based on the, the Georgi method uh, that was uh, uh, somewhat similar to uh, Caffarelli and Vassar result for linear diffusion systems, but in our case, we have a nonlinear uh, transport term, which we have to actually build into this uh, argument. So uh, most of the arguments on, on the Georgia method, they're based on the linear, the, uh, linear uh, rescaling. In our case, it is fully nonlinear. So we have to really uh, take into account how 
the nonlinearity behaves on the rescale in the solution, zooming into a point. Uh, so let me not say more about this. I would like to jump to the third part and it's, uh, describe uh, the stochastic approach to this um, uh, issue of emergence. So suppose that we start with our favorite kinetic, uh, oh, sorry, our favorite uh, alignment model. Here, these brackets uh, simply mean there's some kind of averaging protocol, could be Cooker snail, could be any other protocol. And there is a function which measures the strengths of that, uh, of that communication. But now we, we uh, stochastically force this equation in a, in a specific way. So WIs are independent Brownian motions, but we also insert this uh, kind of semi-additive noise, which depends only on the spatial, spatial variables. So in the mean field limit, uh, this creates the uh, uh, corresponding Fokker-Planck alignment equation. So this is just the uh, forward Kolmogorov equation. Uh, uh, corresponding to the stochastic system for the first marginals. And the way we, uh, no, we, we, enforce, uh, the, uh, we, we enforce the discrete model, this will create the corresponding uh, strength coefficients in the uh, transport term of the Fokker-Planck equation. So uh, why we do that? Because we want to make sure that, uh, that the, um, there is a natural solution to this to this equation, which is uh, again uh, Maxwellian. So we hope to prove that for such systems, such systems, uh, global regular solutions uh, uh, relax to the corresponding Maxwellian, and uh, and if they do, then the alignment can be recovered by taking the uh, uh, the noise strengths go into zero because then, of course, the Maxwellian will concentrate to uh, the monokinetic uh, solution with velocity uh, concentrated on one on one direction. So, in so, so so we we introduce a disorder to the system, uh, but then over time it rearranges itself to uh, sort of this thermodynamic equilibrium, which concentrates back to the aligned state as the noise goes to zero. So for those uh, who are in fluids, they recognize that this is how we also understand uh, various st uh, statistical laws of turbulence. First, we take time going to infinity. We study the system on the attractor. And then we take the uh, vanishing viscosity limit and see, uh, see how the uh, various statistical laws, such as structure functions and, 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 and uh, energy uh, dissipation rates, uh, stabilize in the vanishing viscosity limit. So something of this sort happening in this uh, alignment dynamics, except that our attractor is somewhat much simpler. It's just one point, one Maxwellian. So this program uh, was uh, has seen partial success, I would say. Uh, the first result was done by Duan for, uh, for Nazir and Toscani in 2010, where they actually uh, study this limit for the original uh, uh, cooker snail system. Uh, but they did it in a perturbative regime. So here, uh, the initial data is going to be very, very close to the, uh, to the Maxwellian. So uh, the technical issue was that the, uh, there was no, uh, the entropy, uh, the natural entropy that you can define for this uh, Fokker Planck equation is not decaying. So they had to really be close to Maxwellian already to overcome this difficulty. Uh, for the purely local model, uh, Choi established a similar result also in perturbative settings. But here you, all, you, you do have decaying, decaying entropy. Difficulty here, though, is that the macroscopic velocity is very rough. So it's not a priori. It doesn't even belong to any LP space. So in order to overcome that difficulty, you have to stay very close to the Maxwellian in order for your density to be bounded away from zero. And that's how you regain the regularity of this field. Um, so these results were inspired by the corresponding results from the collisional models, such as Landau and Boltzmann, done by Du and uh, by Gu and Duan around the same time. So uh, it seemed somewhat artificial because we really, I mean, because, because the, um, 
the, the Fokker Planck alignment model is not collisional. Okay, so a better result seem, seem to be achievable in these settings. So what, what we proposed recently was to actually uh, introduce a special averaging protocol, which allows us to produce this uh, global relaxation result. So this protocol um, came from um, uh, what's called the moch tadmor model. So moch tadmor model is basically, uh, is basically a cooker smail. Let me go back one second. It's basically a cooker smail model, but with uh, averaging, but, but with a strength equal to identically one, okay? So it emerged uh, uh, at shortly after much, well, not shortly, in, in around 2011, uh, as, a, as a way to overcome uh, various multi-scaling uh, anomalies that uh, uh, come from Cougar snail. So uh, again, people in fluids may recognize this, uh, this averaging protocol as what's called Favre filtration that uh, is used extensively in large eddy formulation uh, simulations of compressible turbulence. So what we proposed to do was to add another modification on top of this. So, and that simple trick actually removed very, uh, I mean, it removed a lot of problems. And in fact, it has been used already in, in various situations. First of all, if you use it for Marsh Tadmer model, it actually restores conservation of momentum, which the original model was lacking. Um, it's easier to do analysis in this case. Uh, uh, I used it to establish hydrodynamic limit for in monokinetic regime uh, to extend Figali and uh, Khan results to flocks with compact support. Uh, and uh, earlier, uh, we used it with uh, Leslie to prove unsagged critical conservation loss for incompressible non homogeneous Euler and obvious stokes equation. Uh, but this was done in terms of Little Wood Paley uh, calculus. So if we consider this averaging, turns out that a lot of things come into place very nicely, and we can prove the following general uh, result. So under this connectivity assumption, which means that, uh, sorry, my notation here, so phi, phi sub rho is just the convolution of rho and communication kernel. Okay, so if you have a, a completely local communication kernel, and the convolution of the density with this kernel is bigger, it remains bounded away from zero point-wise. So this simply means that uh, you can still have vacuum, but uh, this means that the density has to be present almost everywhere. So you, you need to have a patch of, uh, of, of density with uh, finite mass in any ball of radius uh, given by the communication uh, range of the kernel. Okay, so you may have vacuums actually. This is this is drastically different from the topological result, uh, which requires some uniform bound in the density, but that bound can deteriorate on time. Here you may have vacuum, but on average it has to the density has to be bounded away from zero. And so in this case, uh, such a solution will uh, converge exponentially fast with this specific uh, exponential rate to the max -valian. Uh Moreover, actually, this condition also ensures a global well-posedness. So, if you uh, if if you remain bounded away from zero in this in this particular sense, then in fact your solution is going to be globally well-posed. Um, and the result, this result is based on not on the collisional technique, but on uh, uh, Villani's method of hypercursivity. So. We, we write the equation in terms of these uh, distribution, distribution functions, and, uh, uh, and you write the equation in terms of these uh, 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 transport and diffusion operators. And turns out the alignment term here can also be written in terms of the, uh, uh, in terms of the diffusion operator A. And my notation here is standard. It's the same operation, it's the same notation that uh, is used in this, uh, in this business of hypercursivity for Fokker-Planck equations. Um, so what's interesting is that uh, without getting too much maybe into the detail, 
the computation related to the Fokker-Planck part of the system is, of course, the same as the classical one. But because of this particular choice of the averaging protocol, the alignment part spits out only this modified energy, okay? No other higher order terms. And in fact, higher order terms that it does spit out, they get absorbed into the dissipation coming from the Fokker-Planck equation. So because of this particular choice of the averaging, it actually talks to the Fokker-Planck part. So there's an organic symbiosis between, between the two parts. And then um, uh, when, once you write the, so, so once you write the uh, equation for the relative entropy, you can kind of see this, this um, uh, sort of two energies appearing. One is mollified energy and the other one is kind of twice mollified energy. And it turns out that one is larger than the other and not only larger, you could quantify this difference. It's gonna be, uh, uh, this difference is actually uh, dominates this mollified energy. So combine the two forms of the entropy equation, you can actually produce uh, dissipation of both the Fisher information in the kinetic variable, but also the energy itself. Now, to, uh, we, we do have the issue of hypercursivity, so you definitely see the, dis, the uh, decay of the relative entropy, but you cannot close the argument because what you are missing is the uh, sp spatial part of the Fisher entropy. So the two will actually dominate the relative entropy according to log Sobolev inequality. But in order to, to restore this spatial part, you have to add uh, another mixed uh, Fisher information functional and build it into the, uh, into the dynamics. So you, you have to read off the evolution equation for this, for this big quantity with a properly chosen parameter A. It, uh, it, uh, the, this equation absorbs all the bad terms basically, and you obtain uh, just a pure Gronholm inequality. And then you, you can trace back the coefficient, uh, the uh, noise coefficient to this particular square root of sigma here. So this, this gives you the exponential rate with this particular uh, dependence on the noise. Uh, one con consequence of this result is that in perturbative regime, so if in fact you start close to Maxwellian, uh, then you don't have to require this connectivity condition for all times. So the, it will be called, it will be uh, automatically satisfied. And you get global well poseness in this case and relaxation to the Maxwellian. And what's interesting is what different from the previous results that I mentioned earlier is that this condition does not de degenerate as you let sigma go to zero. So you would think that if sigma goes to zero, then the initial distribution has to, has to converge to some flat distribution uh, concentrated at the, uh, at the average momentum, but it's not, in fact. It may actually allow for a large class of, uh, of distribution of densities. They should be close to small because of this epsilon, but, but they still allow some freedom, okay? So uh, this condition does not degenerate and it actually will converge to a class of these traveling wave solutions uh, to the corresponding noiseless uh, Vlaso equation. So uh, my time is uh, up, I guess. So let me just conclude by uh, a few uh, items on the future agenda. Um, the global proposedness versus blow up for multi D singular Euler alignment system is a very pressing problems and it, it is motivated uh, by this recent uh, machine learning applications, which uh, recreated the real data for specific values of the singularity uh, exponent. So we, we want to obtain some kind of regular, uh, coherent regularity theory for multi-D uh, all alignment systems. We would like to improve rates, of course, in every case we get alignment, uh, uh, we would like to improve rates of alignment to uh, exponential or maybe some strongly algebraic uh, rates. Um, uh, it would be interesting to study flux and bounded domains. Uh, some of my students actually started on that project, uh, but with various uh, mixed success so far. Uh, the regularity theory for isothermal Euler alignment system is a, is a very open problem. Uh, there were some partial results obtained by, by Choi and uh, in our joint work with Konstantin and Drivas. 
using the hierarchy of uh, Duchamp, Robert, um, uh, no, uh, Brecht, Desjardins, and Trappist, sorry. Um, and of course, coming back to the emergence itself, so relaxation for completely disconnected flocks remains open. So what can we say if the kernel is, is local and you have no assumption on, uh, on the connectivity whatsoever? I mean, in principle, this could be done for, for systems with noise because uh, it, it does disperse, it does diffuse the, full, the flock instantaneously, but to obtain this lower Gaussian bound on the density distribution, which can be done uh, for the pure Fokker, Fokker plug equation was done by uh, Develet and, um, and Villani. Uh, this, this, this stumbles upon technical issues for the alignment model because such a bound will depend on a bound on the uh, macroscopic velocity, which itself depends on the lower bound on the, on the uh, density distribution. So it's kind of a logical circle. So something, something is very, very interesting to explore further. And uh, well, a lot of things that I discussed today, except maybe for this uh, uh, last part that I mentioned uh, is discussed in my recent book. So if you're interested in, interested in this uh, field, you can consult it. It's written there in all the details. Uh, and at this point, uh, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity and thanks for your attention. Thank you, Roman. Thank you for the nice talk. So the floor is open for questions. So you can post them on the Q&A and uh, or you can just, uh, we can just uh, unmute you to ask um, the question. I have a chat window open so I can see questions if you would like to ask. to leave uh, people thinking about questions also in the meantime, can I ask you a question? Yes, please. Um, yeah, well, I haven't, uh, well, one that uh, just uh, um, came to me from the last part of your, of your talk, uh, what's the interpretation of the double, uh, of the double average with the phi there in a sense? I mean, can you interpret that in terms of the model itself? Because the uh, Moch and Tambor has uh, the nice interpretation and the nice, uh, uh, yes effect on the at the level of particles what's the, le at the level of particles? so it actually has uh, yeah on the level of particles uh, uh, there is so let me let me open somewhere yeah um, so on the level of particles uh, the much tadmer model uh, basically says the following you take uh, some phi x i minus x j v j minus v i over j, right? But then yes. you also, but then you yes. also divide. Normalize. Mm -hmm. Normalize, right. So, and here you need to actually introduce the masses as well. So you normalize. Okay. So this new model with the extra uh, over mollification, uh, basically uh, what it does, it replaces this xi with a continuous variable y. Mm -hmm. And then you put another mollification. That, so that's the discrete analog of the extra mollification now at xi minus y, and then you integrate over y. Okay, so this is the discrete model. So yeah. this, this model uh, basically has the same advantages of the moch tadmer but it also restores the symmetry. So the momentum is gonna be conserved, mm -hmm. which is not the case for moch tadmer if you remember, uh, so that's that's the that's the discrete uh, version of it, and one can actually justify the mean field limit from this to LASP. Yes, that that I was, was asking more about the interpretation of this. What's the, I mean, uh, intuitively, what the, would be the advantage apart from 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 uh, these properties? Yeah. Yeah. So one can see advantage uh, be because it restores the symmetry. You. Um, once you run this uh, hypercursivity uh, estimates, you will see that you need an extra mollification to move to other terms in the equations to produce various constellations. There are interesting constellations that, that are happening to arrive, to arrive at this equation. So, okay. 
Now that there is a question in the in the chat, uh, you you, uh, you can read it. Uh, they are asking, uh, can you read it? They are yeah, asking the about the uh, cylinder case. Yes. Uh, so first of all, uh, the 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 any uh, any unbounded case in this case will be uh, conflicted with this with this assumption um, because because, well, or not conflicted if you are okay with studying uh, flocks with infinite mass. So any unbounded case with such connectivity assumption will be uh, in conflict with finiteness of mass. So if you are okay with that, then I'm pretty sure that you can produce similar results in cylindrical case, or maybe even the open space too. So uh, from technical point of view, I don't see any reasons why you shouldn't. And in fact, um, I mean, such results, uh, for example, for the singular uh, Euler alignment system for nearly aligned flock, uh, they were established by uh, um, by Dan Shen and uh, uh, the, the, the result that I mentioned earlier. Uh, that was in the open space with the density close to one. So people do study these things. It's it can be interpreted as you are <clears throat> looking at dynamics in the bulk of the flock. So yes, uh, I think it. Uh, it could make it would be make sense to do that. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? There is a, a question of Simeon on, on the chat. So uh, Simeon is asking me sigma to the one half rate sharp in general. Uh, I don't know. This is what comes out from the scaling. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it should be sharp. Okay, so you you will you can probably the way it was achieved. We just basically keep track of the sigma across the whole argument uh, because I mean I, I just wanted to see how all these fun, uh, Fisher functionals uh, scale. They they scale naturally, uh, and uh, uh, the log uh, how the log sobolev inequality. Uh, needs to be rescaled to incorporate the sigma, but you can probably rescale <laughs> the initial condition and arrive at the same rate. So I'm pretty sure whatever you, whatever we obtain here directly would be uh, would be a sharp result. Um, perhaps one can maybe even compute some simple solutions with uniformly distributed uh, density and initial data close to Maxwellian distribution to see that rate. So, but we haven't done that. It's a good question. Any other question? Uh, Selena said that you can unmute yourself at this point. Okay, so if not, uh, let's thank Roman again. Thank you thank very you, much. Roman. So I think we'll convene in a month from now. And I guess if you're interested in what Roman has been talking about, you can always contact him by email. Okay. I'll always That's be all. happy to answer your questions. And who is the next speaker? Is it known already? Yes, uh, Monica Vizan from Silly. Nice. Okay, so we will convene in October now. Thank you okay. very much for thank you very much, Roman. Okay. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Well. And I hope to see you all in person sometime soon. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.